Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dosen. I got some good news for both you Xbox and PlayStation fans out there today. On the PlayStation side of things, it looks like right now a game that some fans have been a little concerned about. It, it, it released today and it might actually be yet another must own PlayStation exclusive. Yeah, you know what? PlayStation's had a pretty solid first year with just their entire library of games and I will get into all of that later on in the video. And then also, we got some big Halo Infinite news as well. Halo Infinite, of course, is set to release December 10th later this year, but I know a lot of you are kind of craving to play more of that game, and well, I got some good news for you today because it looks like that is exactly what is about to happen. Plus, with a game mode that I'm personally very excited about, so we will get into all of that today. To start this video off, though, we're actually going to be talking about a Nintendo Switch game being Neo The World Ends With You. Neo The World Ends With You did release a couple months back in July for the Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation 4. But now it actually looks like it will be heading over to PC via the Epic Game Store on September 28th. Yes, just kind of out of nowhere, it did get a release date for the Epic Game Store and you're really not going to have to wait too long at all with it releasing next week on Tuesday, September 28th. It is set for $60 and really I think this is just good news all around for The World Ends With You fans. The thing about this particular franchise is that the original was a bit of a cult classic. A lot of fans really loved that game and they'd been asking for a sequel for years and years and now we finally got that with Neo The World Ends with you and it's a pretty good game as well and I, I think if you are a fan of this franchise you're going to want this game to reach as wide of an audience as it possibly can the more success that this game has the more likely it is that we'll get yet another game just kind of throwing that out there for that matter, with Neo The World Ends With You coming to PC, I actually hope Square Enix thinks about bringing this to Xbox sometimes in the future. I think a game like this could have a lot of success releasing directly into Xbox Game Pass. We have been seeing a lot of these Japanese games launch into a service like that with some success. So hopefully they consider that as well because, you know, again, I would like to see them be able to continue this franchise going forward and the more platforms this game releases on, the more likely it is for this game to have success. But yeah, if you've been waiting to play this game on PC, again, it will be releasing on the Epic Game Store September 28th. Next up, we're gonna be talking about Minecraft for just a moment because, yeah, according to a LinkedIn post, Minecraft is the most successful video game franchise of all time. According to this LinkedIn post, the franchise has now sold over 200 million copies and earned over 1.1 billion dollars in 2020. First off, that's absolutely insane. I mean, this story is kind of amusing to me for several different reasons, and mainly because I think when Microsoft acquired Mojang and Minecraft for $2.5 billion, there was a lot of criticism that followed. A lot of people thought they were acquiring an IP that was basically had peaked by that point and that it wasn't going to continue to sell as well as it did up to that acquisition. Well, those people could not have been any more wrong because since the acquisition, Xbox has continued to just accelerate the Minecraft franchise. Really on a monthly basis, Minecraft is consistently one of the best selling games. And then you also have all the merchandise that they sell. There's also DLC and microtransactions. Yeah, they make a lot of money on this franchise, whether that be on mobile, you have it on consoles, it's on PC. Minecraft is just insanely successful, and that goes beyond just the main game. They also have spinoffs such as Minecraft Dungeons, which in my opinion is one of the better cooperative experiences that you can play right now. So it almost seems like Microsoft knows what they're doing, and really Minecraft shows no signs of slowing down at all. This game is going to continue to have that amount of success for years and years to come, and especially with it being so successful with younger kids. I mean, there's always going to be new people that's introduced to this game as they're growing up. So, you know, big congrats to Microsoft and Mojang on all the success that they've had with Minecraft. 
Now, as for the quote in this uh, LinkedIn post, this is coming from a product marketing manager over at Xbox Studios. So this is a pretty legit post, but it does say Minecraft is the most successful video game franchise of all time. And I do have to question that a little bit. I think without a doubt, Minecraft is one of the most successful gaming franchises out there with all the merchandise, the games like Minecraft Dungeons, you have Minecraft and you have Minecraft the Telltale games. But, you know, there's still franchises out there such as Mario. Mario has a ton of releases and they've been successful for a very, very long time. So I, I do question on whether it's the most successful franchise of all time, but definitely still up there as being one of the all time most successful. So, you know, big congrats again to Microsoft and Mojang. Next up, let's talk about a PlayStation 5 game that just released today. Now, this is also available on a PlayStation 4 and PC, but yes, Kena Bridge of Spirits just launched today, and we talked a little bit about this yesterday, but there has been some fans out there that's been a little bit concerned about whether or not this game will be good or not. PlayStation, for whatever reason, hasn't really been showcasing this game as much as what you would think, and there was some posts over the weekend that some outlets weren't receiving review codes and this that, and the other so there's been some concern with this game and as i said yesterday i'm not really buying into all that just yet i think people need to pump their brakes and just kind of see what plays out i tend to be a little bit more optimistic i understand that but yes reviews are starting to roll out now and well guess what it looks like kena bridge of spirits might be a good game after all with it receiving an 84 overall score on metacritic of course, this number could still move up or down, but it does have 24 reviews as of this recording, and that's a nice little sample size right there. It does seem like most people currently are really liking Kena Bridge of Spirits, and based off the reviews that I've seen, it seems to be drawing some comparisons to the classic Zelda games. And I, I mean, I don't know about you all, but that alone gets me really, really excited. I love the old Zelda games, and quite frankly, I do prefer the classic Zelda games to Zelda Breath of the Wild. I mean, that's a good game and everything. It's more of an open world style of game, but yes, I do prefer the classic Zelda games. So as soon as I heard that Kena Bridge of Spirits has some similarities with games like that, yeah, that's immediately going to grab my attention. Beyond that, though, I mean, it seems like it's got a pretty interesting story. The animations are just as gorgeous as they look in those trailers, which is really nice to hear. It's got solid platforming, and the combat is simple but challenging, and it also has an open world that just begs to be explored. I think just from top to bottom, this actually sounds like a really, really interesting game. And what's so impressive about this is that it's actually Ember Lab's first game. I mean, clearly they have experience when it comes to animations and everything like that, but it's easy to forget just because of how good this game looks, but this game is being developed by a small team, and this is their first game ever, and well, it does seem like they're getting off to a very good start with Kena Bridge of Spirits. Now, with this game being a smaller game, though, even though it shares some similarities with the Zelda games as a whole, this isn't necessarily going to be as long as Zelda games, and I'm hearing it's more around 9 to 10 hours long. I personally think that that's a pretty decent length myself. I, I sometimes get tired of playing all of these 20, 30, 40 hour long games. Sometimes I, I would like that time to be cut down. So as long as the quality is there, which it definitely seems that's the case with Kena Bridge of Spirits, then I'm personally going to be very happy with that. Now, keep in mind, as I said yesterday, Kena Bridge of Spirits does launch today digitally, but if you want a physical version, they did announce a physical version that will release November in partnership with Maximum Games. Yeah, it's a little bit of a wait, and that's unfortunate, but do keep that in mind if you are a physical collector. Nonetheless, you know, big congrats to Ember Labs on their first successful game with Kena Bridge of Spirits. I hope it sells well. And for that matter, you know what? If we take a look at the PlayStation 5, I think they've actually had a very impressive start to the generation. I mean, if you take a look at the PlayStation 5 since it's launched, they've had quite a great first party and exclusive lineup. I mean, you have Sackboy Big Adventure, there's Astro's Playroom, Demon Souls, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, there's Returnal, you have Deathloop, which just released, that's a timed exclusive, and now you have Kena Bridge of Spirits, which is a console exclusive, I, I believe it's timed as well. But really, PlayStation's had a really good lineup for their first year. I think it's much better than the first year's lineup for the PlayStation 4, which I thought was pretty weak 
week back then. So good job on PlayStation's part for getting all these great games for the first year of the PlayStation 5's life. I really have to give them props for doing that well their first year. Next up, let's talk about an Xbox game being Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite is set to release December 10th this year for Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC, and yeah, there's a lot of excitement when it comes to this particular game. Now, with any Halo game, there's always going to be excitement, but it's been a little while since we've played a big Halo game, Halo 5. If you think about it, Halo 5 released back in 2015, so it's been six years. Yeah, it's been a little while, and this is also the first big Xbox series Halo game as well. So, yeah, excitement by this point is just absolutely through the roof. And fans by this point are just craving to play Halo. And that's what we're actually going to be talking about today, because you're going to get a chance to play Halo Infinite yourself real soon. Yeah, if we take a look over here at Halo Waypoint's blog post, they had this to say. It feels like just yesterday we were battling against bots during our first multiplayer tech preview. Now as launch approaches, it's time to look forward to our second and even bigger tech preview. This weekend, September 23rd to 26th, and next weekend, September 30th to October 3rd, we'll be taking things up a notch and testing out full-blown multiplayer. The first weekend will focus on the arena 4 vs 4 gameplay experience, and the second weekend is when big team battles 12 vs 12 will come online. So there you have it, you're going to get another chance to play Halo Infinite's multiplayer this weekend, and yes, that includes online matchmaking. Now, the last tech preview was very well received with fans just praising just how good Halo Infinite feels. It almost feels like this perfect blend of your classic Halo formula with more of a modern style. Yes, you can sprint in Halo Infinite, but it doesn't really seem like a major speed increase compared to just walking around. So that was an interesting way of dealing with the sprint versus no sprint debate out there. But you know, now we're really going to see how this feels with online matchmaking. Now, with that said, they do have a full schedule of when you can play this game. You're not just going to be able to turn it on and play its online matchmaking anytime you want. They do have very specific time frames in which you can play its online matchmaking, and there's actually a good reason for that. We'll get into that here in just a moment, but if you take a look here, you can see that most days you're going to be able to play between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific Time, and then 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Time. Now, the reason for this is because they want to get as many people online all at once, that way they can really stress their servers. This is incredibly important. The first thing you need to keep in mind is that this is a tech preview. They're doing this so we can find bugs, they need to see how their servers can handle it, and again, this is extremely important for multiple reasons. One, Halo Infinite is going to be available on more devices than any other Halo game at launch than ever. It's going to be available on the Xbox One, the Xbox Series, as well as PC. So, so it's important that they can see how much stress their servers can take, and especially with this game launching day one in the Xbox Game Pass, this is going to be a massive, massive launch for Halo Infinite. And we saw what happened with Halo The Mass Chief Collection. That was a very, very good game, and it really improved over time, and it's one of the best Halo releases ever now, but when it originally released, it had some major server issues. They're not going to want to go through all that again with Halo Infinite. So this is very important to just kind of funnel all these players onto their servers all at once. What I'm most interested in here, though, is that weekend number two. So you can see here weekend number one, they're focused on arena multiplayer, but I'm really, really interested in weekend two where they're actually going to be showcasing big team battles. That one is really exciting to me because it does seem like 343 is emphasizing big team battles a lot more with Halo Infinite. It felt like it took a step back with Halo 5, but here they're actually trying to improve big team battles. It's no longer eight versus eight multiplayer, but now it's actually 12 versus 12. They talked a lot about pacing and battles and why they went with 12 versus 12, and it does sound like they have worked really hard to make big team battles feel good when it comes to Halo Infinite. I'm personally a big fan of big team battles, and yeah, I want to see how it feels with 12 versus 12 and just in general with Halo Infinite, and well, we are going to get that chance very soon. So if you all are excited to play Halo Infinite, you know, keep in mind all the different dates for Halo Infinite's online matchmaking tech preview. 
At the same time though, do keep in mind that yes, this is a tech preview and this is designed to find bugs and different issues with their servers. On to the final topic of the day though, an interesting game popped up for the Nintendo Switch. Now for the time being, this is only a game rating, but yes, Alan Wake did pop up on the Brazilian rating boards for the Nintendo Switch. And that one's really interesting because that Alan Wake remaster was just announced for Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and it is set to release on October 5th. As of this moment though, we don't have an official announcement of a Nintendo Switch version in development, but here we have this Brazilian rating. Now, there's a possibility that maybe this could be a mistake, but a lot of the times when you see a rating pop up like this, yeah, and an announcement of said game does happen sometime thereafter. Now, sometimes this could be a couple weeks, sometimes it's a couple months, or even longer than that. There's never really a time frame when a rating like this pops up. I mean, we, we've seen situations where a game gets announced like a day later or even weeks later, but then there's other occasions such as that Castlevania Game Boy Advance collection that keeps popping up on rating boards. That game has yet to get an official announcement, and we've been hearing about that for I want to say at least a couple months now, if not even longer than that. So, you know, you kind of got to keep all that in mind. With that said, though, I think a few different things could be happening here. If let's just hypothetically say Alan Wake Remaster is in development for the Nintendo Switch, there's two different ways that this could be ported. One would be just a simple pour over to the Nintendo Switch, which I think is very possible. Alan Wake was originally an Xbox 360 game, and this remaster doesn't seem too drastic of an improvement, so I think that they could get this working on the Nintendo Switch with a native port. It might be downgraded compared to the Xbox and PlayStation version, but I, I think that it they could very well possibly do that. Now, the other option is to bring this to the Nintendo Switch through the cloud. This is something that Remedy Entertainment has done in the past with the Nintendo Switch. Control is available on the Nintendo Switch through the cloud. I still think that the Nintendo Switch is capable of running this game, so we'll kind of see on all that, but uh, there you have it. Looks like there is a possibility that Alan Wake might be heading over to the Nintendo Switch, and really, hopefully it does. Nothing is confirmed just yet, but we are seeing our first sign with this rating that it might be happening. On to that poll of the day, though. Yesterday, we talked about how Quantic Dreams reportedly is working on a Star Wars game that might be a little bit different than some of their past games. Instead of it being a quick time event movie-like game, it might actually be a little bit more traditional and action-based. It sounds interesting on paper with Quantic Dreams being very talented, and then of course you have the Star Wars IP, which is incredibly popular. But I wanted to ask you all, based on the rumors that we are hearing, are you interested in a Star Wars game developed by Quantic Dream? And yes, for the most part, it does sound like most of you are very interested in this with 55% of you saying yes and 31% of you saying no. Now, looking through the comments, it does seem like a few of you are worried that this game might be exclusive to one platform or the other. Quantic Dreams in the past has typically worked exclusively with PlayStation, but keep in mind, that they did in that contract with Sony back in 2018. So they are free to work on whatever platform they want from this point forward. So I do imagine that this game will end up being multi-platform. We can't exactly rule out the possibility that it will be exclusive, especially with Disney working on multiple exclusive games with PlayStation, but I still think that this likely will be multi-platform as it'd probably be in the best interest for Disney and their license IP. We'll kind of see about all that, but nonetheless, you know, like I said yesterday, Quantic Dream is a very talented studio, and that's what I'm most excited about myself. I'm not necessarily a huge Star Wars fan. I did really like it back when I was a teenager, but I really have liked Quantic Dream's past games, such as Heavy Rain and Detroit Become Human. I think they're talented, and with them working on such a beloved IP like Star Wars, I think this one has some potential. Hopefully, this one turns out to be as exciting as it is on paper. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.